Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 18. Is this Canute arriving? Yep. There he is. Damn. Yeah, it's all true. That's good guy Floki, always trustworthy and respectful. I mean, the real threat is his kid, one of them. Good guy Floki. <laughs> poison for all. Poison. Poison for you and you. Everyone gets poison. Little does Canute know. There's a lot more destiny for him on Kettle's farm than just farm. But it's kind of amazing to me that they're talking about Kettle being the threat, you know, with Thorgil there. Episode 18, The First Method. Got some bad news for you, fellas. Brought you a gift. It's war. Dead. Strike. Just having a great time, you know, despite everything. Just bowling his father. Father bowling. That was some real disrespect right there. We got bigger fish to dry. <laughs> he says cheerfully. He says ecstatically. Isn't this great news? Not everyone is as enthused about, as Thorgil about this. It's the greatest day of Thorgil's life. He says, ecstatically. <laughs> yes for it. Careful what you wish for. Classic example. Sorry, I, a little bit disoriented over being bold by my son. I, how did I know he's going to say Arnid? He's just reverting. Going into his like fetal childhood state. He just wants to crawl on a woman's lap against her will. Good news, Arnie. You may have lost your noble, dark Jesus husband, Garter. But your man Kettle is back. And boy, is he ready to cry on your lap. If you like tears, I got a man for you. Wow, that is very cheerful, Fake Thorfinn. Thank you. At the very least, we got home field advantage. This is turning into seven samurai real quick. Oh, you know, just the king. Definitely bearing the lead there. Okay, you're fired. What? What is this guy's worth, really? That's true. They almost got wiped out by Garter. Oh man. Einer, Lorfin, you gotta. Oh, they're tied up! Got a big storm coming. Same thing he's gonna do every day cry in her lap. They've all been saved by this unfortunate event. He won't. I'm more curious what how Ar Arnie is holding up, what she's gonna do. It's back to normal? Feels hard to believe. Yeah, but Yeah, what do we make of, of that? What do we go from here? I can imagine this leaving Thorfinn more resolute in that after experiencing it. At the very least, he's more aware of the challenges. It's different actually coming up against it. I got so many mixed feelings about this because you just can't control all of the circumstances of life. No matter what Thorfinn intends, things are going to go down. There's no paradise on earth. This is not useful to the extent that it's 
just self-blame. It is useful to the extent that this is him kind of meeting a truth. That's what engaging with the world is. It's like the hand of existence itself. It doesn't really matter what you think or what you want to believe in light of that. It'll expose your blind spots. It'll expose your weaknesses. So to the extent that he's not running from this and is reflecting on what else he could do or how else he could manage this, or maybe even that there's nothing he could do in certain circumstances, then this experience almost feels essential to me. I think maybe part of the key for Thorfinn and just in general is to focus on the things that are actually in his control. He can control his actions. He can control what he does. And I think you do that to the best of your ability. And then you have to let go a little bit of the rest. Was there something else Thorfinn could have done? I don't know. Were Thorfinn's actions in that situation perfectly clean? I don't really feel that way, but they were pretty damn good. It, it, he was pretty honorable in that situation. It's tough to swallow, but you can be right and wrong at the same time. You can do the right thing and have it go wrong. It doesn't mean it wasn't the right thing, even though that's often how we evaluate things. I think what would really hone it in for Thorfinn is what felt wrong to him about what he did. That's at least workable. That's There's something you can do with that. There's nothing you can do about the violence that befell him, at least not in the heat of the moment right then. <laughs> He could have. He made a choice too. First method. There it is. It's amazing how, how open hearted Einar is that he can just slip into Thorfinn's worldview. I need is just surrounded by men who just need her for their own rescuing. Who's gonna rescue Arnid? <laughs> F you, I'm looking for Arnid. <laughs> good husband, good husband. Oh god, he's saying this out loud. Uh, yeah, well, Arnid's gonna catch a beating. And I'm sure the wife is just so torn up about that. No grudges here. <laughs> This is a long story. I mean, her husband. Okay. Don't take it personally, but also take it personally. It's your fault. You're no garter. Man, Kyle's just broken. It's been a rough, uh, rough couple of weeks. Man, people like Kettle are truly dangerous. I mean, I like him to an extent. He's shown himself to have a good heart. Generally speaking, he has a good core in there somewhere, but his his weaknesses are dangerous. His fear and his loneliness make him er erratic and desperate. I'm thinking now about the moment with the kids where he, you know, he really had a strong distaste for their punishment. That to me was a good thing in effect, but the fact that it comes from fear, right? Not actual, just really resolute principle makes me imagine that that fear is actually leading. And if it gets to the point where the fear is leading the decision making, there are plenty of scenarios where he would do much worse, if that makes sense. <sighs> Snake's always such a hard ass. I mean, again, he's doing his job. Good luck getting anything out of Kettle right now. <laughs> Speaking of rough weeks. Oh, hey. Yeah, when he's not compromised. Speaking of going above and beyond. This guy's just looking out for them. For, for what? I mean, what does he even get out of it? Knew that was coming, still annoying. He's gotta say it out loud, too. That's my guess as well, but there's a chance he is. He just flies off the handle while he's in this state. Whoops. I was gonna hope he would get the caning, but oh well. There goes another brave hero of a guest. Damn! Nazeta! 
Oh, kettle. Bro, you're doing a great job of that by yourself. Who does that sound like? It sounds like uh, Omar. Omar, there's that family weakness. Amazing how things have kind of flipped. Just by comparison, Thorgil seems ultra heroic because at least the man is strong. You know, at least he's following some kind of code and it's Viking code. It's terrible, but I mean, he's fighting other warriors, not beating up on handcuffed women out of jealousy and a feeling of impotence and uselessness. I guess in his status state, he really convinced himself that Arnid was there voluntarily. That's a bitter pill. Yeah, I'm with the horse on this one. Oh, you... That's... Oh, that's her. Please don't let this happen to Arnie. Oh. Oh, thank God. Oh, Snake, my man. Breaking rank. That's so good to see. I'm so, I'm so relieved it's him. Kettle, this, Kettle just kind of, he just sealed his. He's, you go into this, you go this far, you don't even realize what you're doing in the moment, but it's a total defeat of self. It's, you're giving up. You're not even imagining a future where you're living and processing and being normal. It's total abandon. This is throwing terrible after bad, and this is something that he'll never forget. He's just doomed himself to a life of knowing what he truly is. He'll never get this back. I don't know, Arnie may have had some love for him at some point, you know, in a weird, twisted way. Life is complicated like that, but she never will again. And not only is, is Kettle's illusion of their bond shattered, he will now know it's undeniably his fault. It's undeniably because he's not worth loving. He's not worth anything. He's not worth her. He himself has doomed himself to confirming his worst fears beyond a shadow of a doubt. That he is this weak man. That's not, not really worthy of much. And that is just existential hell. Snake just saved her. You hope not to downplay the trauma that experiences that are not your fault can cause random acts of violence or evil that you experience. Those leave their mark just because of how it scars your vision of humanity, makes it hard to trust, makes you wonder if it was your fault, etc. Since it's, you know, our tendency to take the blame for everything that happens, since that's just the way we're wired to think about our lives and what events transpire. There's a special kind of hell you live in when those things, the things that are most traumatic and horrifying, you did yourself, where you actually could have not done it. You had a choice and you did it anyway. You, you lost control. You answered to a, a higher, darker master psychologically that you let fester. It's very hard to have sympathy for Kettle in this moment watching him do this, but at least I'll say that I do not envy him and his coping with the things he's doing himself. He's watching himself do this right now and he will surely feel it even more potently when he sobers up from this rage. Nobody liked that. Y yes. Maybe not right now. Maybe not now. Maybe this is not the time. This is a gamble. Kettle had done so much too. Like, he's somebody you want to like. One thing after another. So throughout the Garter episodes, I was saying that despite the fact that there are a lot of actually really great things about him, there was one glaring problem, one glaring weakness, and that was the fact that it was a rescue attempt for himself. I mean, not to blame him for this. That was Kettle. Kettle did that. But this is a really dark side of, of heroism that I feel you actually don't see, or I can't think of many examples of right now. And actually is one of the main difficulties of heroism itself, where you gotta be careful. Like, you have to be careful not doing things you can't fully grasp or handle. I think the danger is in, is in self-confusion or self-delusion. And it's scary because it's so difficult. Like sometimes you, you see something that you feel is wrong or it activates an emotional response in you and you think, I, I got to do something. I believe, generally speaking, that if it's based on real, solid, grounded, unselfish principle and you bear all the costs for that thing, it's probably something worth listening to and worth following. A lot of the time, though, it's actually some other 
other emotion that's disguising itself as heroism or as something that needs to be done. It's an impulse that isn't properly understood that manifests itself as righteousness. That might even be the majority of the heroism you see in real life, where like the aim is noble, you know, on its face, or you can put a noble mask on something. If you, you don't actually have the grounding, and if you have not built yourself into someone who is capable, someone who is a weapon, someone who actually has the tools, someone who has the, the freedom, the emotional and personal resources to follow through in a just and honorable way, there is a high probability that it will create an absolute mess and disaster. You can compare it to Thorfinn, who to me feels clean. He feels clean in this. Einar, I think, would have been a danger to himself had Thorfinn not been there. There was a little bit of fantasy in it for him as well, which is my, my take on it. Not to say there's nothing just about what he wants, but his attraction for Arnie perhaps clouding things somewhat. Snake has had his emotional moments, but I think this at least is an instance where he's clean. And like, again, going back to the comparison, Thorgil, I think myself and the show is counter to his warrior outlook, but he's clean, if that makes sense, because he knows who he is and he knows what he can do and he's going to do what he says. And the responsibility for that falls on his own shoulders. It's very complicated. It's really hard to tease out in oneself, especially someone possessed like Garter. Take Kettle too, right? Kettle's a good guy. He probably tells himself, but it's not totally that. It's also weakness. It's fear. It's wanting a certain respect or image or treatment. It's very murky. And not to just cast judgment on others. I mean, I say a lot of this because of experience in myself where I had the delusions where what I was doing was for the benefit of others, or I had a, a fantasy of being sort of a savior to certain people or a certain person only to discover through a lot of reflection and also things going wrong that it wasn't pure. It was a request. It in some sense was me wanting to be saved. It was me asking for something that I needed and didn't know how to get. And it was disguising itself as goodness. You can't really give from a place of weakness. It's a fantasy that just seems right there for the taking, but there's work involved. There's an endless amount of work to heroism. <laughs> Oh yeah, we got this war coming. Oh, what the hell? He's just on the warpath right now. Okay, let's take this anger and at least, at least, if nothing else, let's just direct it at the invaders, at the incoming threat. I guess, trying to look at it positively, it's, it's heartbreaking, man, to see Kettle do this. But he was holding up a fantasy, and it was a fragile one, and it was broken. I don't know if the path he's going on is the best one, but, I mean, people are complicated, life is complicated. There's gonna be some energy in that, at least. You know, there's some power in that. He just lost this whole mental schematic that, you know, he's trying so hard to protect. Because it was flimsy in the first place, and, you know, it was gonna break eventually, and now it's broken. So what does he do now? Fight to protect your farm. All right, I can think of worse things. This show just keeps getting me. I keep thinking like, oh, Knut's coming next episode. Knut's coming next episode. The war's going to begin. There's just so much drama to be had on the farm. <laughs> it just keeps being farm drama, which is fine because it's, I mean, this is amazing. It's riveting. Just the, the premise of this whole thing alone is amazing. It, it's literally Severn Samurai, but you know, I'm never going to get older that that premise. Except one of the samurai is a pacifist. That's a novel twist. I don't think Knut knows what he's getting into. He doesn't know Thorfinn's there, which is going to be a, a major shock and reunion. Thorgil is a one-man army on his own. He failed to bring Thorkel. That seems like his first mistake. We've had an establishment of power for Snake, and Kettle is pissed right the hell off. So, oh, and don't forget, we got uh, the world's best warrior, Olmar, who now can convincingly take his sword out of his sheath. And then there's, you know, other soldiers. There's the, the rest of the guests, who honestly I have expect to flee at the first sign of conflict, because they, they've proven themselves to be good for nothing. Especially that blonde guy. Things are heating up on Slave Island.